How you doing, everybody? Happy Alive Day, I suppose. Um, it is I, Phoenix. I'm just chilling uh, in my home slash van, uh, enjoying a good old bevy, homebrew. Uh, apparently, it's part of an experimental batch. Some guy that was raiding my Verge collection a couple of weeks ago gave it to me as an offering. I uh, gave me four of them because um, I, I gave him a fridge and some other goodies. Because, you know, for those that don't know the story, I was swiftly evacuated due to some pretty rational and toxic people just being unreasonable and having some pretty embedded fictions um, in their head, um, you know, about things that never happened, that apparently happened, um, to do with me, and, and so I had to leave. But whatever, doesn't matter, you know, people can have their fictions. Um, everything's fiction, really, and m maybe they're right. Maybe uh, things that I have no recollection of whatsoever and believe that I would never even allow myself to do because of my basic fucking protocol, maybe it happened. I don't know, but that's besides the point. So, uh, right now I'm clearing out my van. Um, so there's, there's like, there's one half of the van. Um, uh, there's the other half. This used to be covered in books right here, and then... This is my bed, and the bed used to be extended um, with the books underneath that made the rest of the bed. Now there's a lot of my shit out there. Um, so I'm just doing a basically uh, a bit of organizing and refining, and I might be tossing out a bit more stuff. Because, you know, when I was leaving, I was in a bit of a mad rush to get everything together and to get everything in the van, you know. So that's what I'm up to now. Um... And yeah, I guess this is just an update for those who care. Um, I've decided, because last week, you know, generally when, when, when I find myself in a, in a bad situation, um, I generally try to come up with, like, you know, some kind of positive narrative to accompany it, to make it into a good thing. So getting kicked out and not really having any time whatsoever to make money so that I could actually fucking afford to do anything, like go somewhere... I barely had any petrol, you know. Um, so given that I was swiftly evacuated, you know, I didn't really have time to find a place. Um, I was rendered homeless. There was no choice. Um, so, you know, last week I posted and I was saying that, you know, I'm, I'm committing to the mobile life and blah, blah, blah. And, and fresh of breath air, breath of fresh air, blah, blah. Um, and, you know, that's still true. Okay, like, I would never get a mortgage on a house because I don't see the point working a uh, good 30 to 50% of your life paying off a mortgage on a coffin that when you retire you can eventually fall into. Um, don't see the point in, in investing so much in a fixed location because, you know, what if, what if your neighbors end up being cunts, you know, and you can't even move. Um, you're forced to stay there. And me, personally, I like variety. I like different locations, different environments, moods, and atmospheres, and people. And I think moving around and experiencing all of that diversity is really good for the soul and the mind and the heart. So, I, I'm still pretty fixed on the idea of, you know, getting a, a more realistic and practical, like, camper van, or, um, you know, even a Winnebago, um, eventually. But, um... But, you know, when, 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 whenever we are in dire straits or something negative happens, we often, when we don't have a choice, we have to come up with a sweet narrative of, like, oh, I'm kind of intentionally doing this for these reasons. And I think I was doing that last week. I was a little bit gung-ho um, and a little bit top-heavy with, like, yeah, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be committed to fucking living free on wheels. Um, you know, I want to do that, but, you know, I, th I think that people should be careful, they should be careful when, whenever they do find themselves in a similar situation where they're coming up with, you know, a post-facto justification narrative to, to help soften the blow of whatever's happened, like, oh, you know, because, you know, for example, like, I, I, I could have, I didn't do this comedy gig, I did a six weeks course for a comedy gig, and I didn't end up performing at the end of it with the rest of the class in front of all these people, um, Pretty much because the night before, fucking on the, the same day, um, I had to do this job. I couldn't get out of it, and I was so fucking tired because the night before I didn't get any sleep whatsoever that I was just in no state to perform, you know.
But I came up with all these justifications of like, oh, well, you know, I was sad, I didn't get to perform, but, you know, to counteract that sadness, I was like, well, I intentionally didn't perform, you know, the guy that taught the class was a, a jackass, and he doesn't deserve to witness my first debut, and blah, 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 and I didn't want to miss out on any of the other gigs. If I had to perform, I would have been backstage, and I didn't want to miss out on anyone. And that bit's kind of true, but, you know, it was, it was more so I made up these justifications and, and this narrative so that it wouldn't suck so bad for me missing out on performing myself. And um, I think when people do this, you've got to be careful to, uh, so, you know, to not just go with it. And, you know, some people might, you know, something really bad might happen and they might be shafted into a situation and then they'll, they'll commit themselves to something else and they'll, out of, you know, because there's not many op other options, and then they'll come up with all these narratives as to why that, the other option that they went to um, is really what they want. And I think you've got to be careful. Um, not to just keep going with that momentum and just to like to keep you know to keep fixed to that choice without a second thought later on because often you might find that oh wow you know I didn't actually want this and I didn't actually that that wasn't really the truth it was just because I was in a shitty situation and I went to this alternative option and at the time you know I had to sweeten it up but um so you know I'd kind of done that I've, I've reflected and I thought you know it's a bit impractical uh, living in my van right now, um, you know, especially in terms of socially, I mean, really, there's only three positions that I can have in this van when the bed's fully made. I can either lay down, I can either sit up with my legs crossed on my bed, or where there's a, a small little gap right there when everything's put together, I can sit up with my legs down in a full sitting position and, you know, read a book or write some stuff or design games or whatever. And, you know, it's not, it's not really much. There's not much, it's not much fucking I can do in this van. It's very, it's very crowded. And, you know, it's cool. I like the idea of being able to travel and go wherever you want and, you know, wake up by the beach or wake up wherever you want. Um, but it doesn't mean I need to fucking live in, in that scenario full time, you know. So even though when I was kicked out um, from my family's home, um... Because to be honest, they were just being outright cunts to me. Um, despite that, you know, and me coming up with that story of like, oh well, I'm choosing to do this to try and reclaim my power. I have given it second thought, and I've decided that you know, a bit more stability, a bit more space, something a bit more practical where I can actually have friends. You know, I can get a few people in here, but like, like I said, this is like a fun thing to do every now and then. If I want to wake up by the beach, I might do that. Um, you know, for a couple of days on a weekend or whatever. Um, but for now, I think what I need is more stability, uh, more practicality. So, and I'm still seeking more work because um, my gardening business is not really much of a business anymore. I've only got a few clients left to barely get me by. And um, so I'm seeking, you know, a home, I suppose. Um, I think I might still do the arrangement where I half live in my van and half live in a house just to reduce the rent, um, and, you know, for now, but, you know, I think that, that's more realistic, and that will allow me to actually eventually afford, um, a better home on wheels, because that is still the lifestyle I want, but not in a fucking van, that's just not practical, is it? So I've been very fortunate for now, I've, um, ran into an old friend of mine, Zach, um, who has offered at least to allow me to keep my van here, and I've talked to him about, you know, chipping in with cleaning around the house and doing the gardening and chucking in some monies where I can, and, you know, I'll spend mo most of the time in my van and half the time going out and visiting friends and whatnot, and he, he seems cool with it. You know, I think he's, it's his father's property, so I think he's going to negotiate a bit, but whatever, you know. So I've, I've been fortunate to have a, a good friend in a time of need. Um... And that's where I'm at now. So now I'm, I'm parked up at, at his and I'm sorting through my stuff and making everything a little bit more efficient and accessible. Um, I've had a pretty good weekend just past. Um, if I look a bit sloshed, it's not just because I'm down half a homebrew, but because this weekend had me slosh. And I'll tell you, I didn't drink a thing. All right, but um, I was pretty blown out and that was fun. And I met some very co um, beautiful and in intelligent people that are on the same wavelength as me and had a, a very enjoyable weekend with them.
Uh, they were very charitable and very friendly and just awesome. Very stimulating conversations to be had. And that was fun. So um, things, things are on the up, you know. I, the last few days have been pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I think I'm procrastinating now. That's why I made this video, you know. <laughs> but I should get back to it. I should go back to fucking... You know it's crazy? Half the shit I got, man. Half the shit. I seriously, half the shit I got is fucking, this fucking piece of shit. It's fucking books, man, like, so many comics and fucking books, like, I swear, 40% of the shit that I decided to take with me, when I reduced all of my shit down by half, or even more, um, is paper. You know, whether it's empty paper to, to create new information on, or whether it's already printed paper. Um, but it's interesting, like, through the process of deciding what to eliminate, um, now reflecting on what I've chosen to keep, kind of reflects, I guess, my personality and what matters most, so, I thought that was kind of cool, um, you know, and books are awesome, like, you know, who needs patience when you go to a book, that's what I say, um, yeah, so that's where I'm at now, I've got a, I've got a bit of stability, I'm not just on the streets randomly, wherever I can keep my van here, and go about wherever I want in my red car if I need to get somewhere. So I've got a base for now. Things are looking up. Um, I'm looking to change out of gardening. Hopefully get a job in like JB Hi-Fi or Dan Murphy's or something like that. And yeah, that's that's about it. That's the update. I hope everyone out there is is fine and um, taking care of themselves and those who they love. And, um, and even those they don't love, you know, I hope you're not being too cruel and neglectful of those that, you know, outside, um, you know, your immediate zone of interest, those in your periphery. Um, I hope everyone's just being friendly overall to everyone, um, if not at least mindful. Alright, so yeah, take care everyone, and I will chat to you later.